At Austin East High School, this sophomore English class is beginning a letter writing campaign to keep their school open. Under a proposal submitted last night to the OCR task force, AE would be one of three inner city schools closed to achieve racial balance. AE is currently 98 percent black. If they were actually trying to balance it out, that it wouldn't be all for the blacks. They would move, you know, some whites in too. The fact is nobody wants their children moved, not Kenneth Harrison, whose children attend public school in the west end of the county. That's one reason why we live in this area. Not Superintendent Earl Hoffmeister, who likes the concept of community schools. Those are what we consider home schools, and I like them, and the people like them. They, they don't want kids just being transferred all over every place. And most of all, not the black students and their parents who are now looking at being moved. Initially, I think it would just tear the community apart. Whitehead and others feel there is no ideal solution that will please everyone, but what everyone apparently wants, at least publicly, is a plan that is fair to all. The OCR's plan calls to have no school where black students make up more than 30 percent of the student body. To meet this goal, some schools may close, including Austin East, which is nearly 98 percent black. Tonight, the task force heard from three committees, including one on zoning. The committee is considering breaking down the county into zones, all to achieve this racial balance. But more than one school exists in some zones, and that can't happen. In this case, it's likely a newer, larger school would stay open. Inner city schools might close, but so would facilities in outlying parts of the county. No, it's not going to make a lot of people happy in terms of closing any facility. But the option that you have to keep in the back of your mind is that if we don't take this approach and we don't voluntarily come up with a plan, then we may very well be forcing a situation January 1 of 1991, three months away, where a decision is made for us. That decision would be made by a federal judge. The task force also heard from another key committee on curriculum. Not only must the system be racially balanced, it must offer a comparable curriculum at each school. Again, zoning plays a key role. We're going to have to increase the size of many of our schools so that we can accommodate anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 students. Will you also have to close some schools? We will have to close some schools that don't meet those standards. Just which schools that will be could be determined in a few days. But tonight, smaller, older schools around the county have an uncertain future. Committee and task force members say they'd like more time to do their jobs, but right now that's a luxury that's no longer available. The committees must finish their work by December 4th because the school board plans to vote on this December 5th. Chuck Denny, Action 10 News, Night Beat. The proposal from the consultants is similar to plans put together by a task force last fall with two main differences. One, its focal point is a new high school, possibly to be built downtown on the World's Fair Park. Secondly, the consultants want to close more schools, but opposition to the plan is strong in school communities and among elected officials. They say these schools shouldn't be closed, but rather renovated with money used to build the downtown school. I'd like to see us follow through in the same manner uh, uh, and with the same enthusiasm with our power structure, with the, like, whether it's Whittle or whether it's Roddy and whether it's Haslam and whether it's University of Tennessee, to focus in on in creating a quality education for, for, uh, uh, for the kids in the East Oxford area. It is small, but we have a branch that's on the yeah. girl. We're going to see a peak at Central High School and then drop rooms at a time taken away from the existing school and the existing Carter High School. I feel that we don't have those kind of transportation digestible problems. Get up to more than that expands, but there's room there. We have gotten so obsessed with drawing lines that we have abandoned educational opportunity and social environment. For this community, it's our death. It re really is. Ever since talk of closing Fulton High School began, this parent coalition has been appealing to the OCR and government officials to keep Fulton open. Today they're drafting a new set of letters they plan to send as far as the White House. They've also consulted a lawyer in case a lawsuit is needed to get their point across.
this should not be uh, based on a black and white issue. It should be based on education for all the children. Parents at Austin East say the same, but many are willing to say goodbye to their school if it means a better education. We're going to get a brand new high school out of the deal, and we're going to get quality education. Then I'm for that. The proposed sites for that brand new school include the World's Fair Park and the Winona Avenue area. Estimates for such a high school are running as high as $50 million. Right now, officials are trying to come up with at least $12 million for next year's budget to simply keep schools afloat. Many parents feel they'll pay the cost of a new school and higher taxes, and they say they aren't willing to do that. Does the Knox County taxpayer want their money going that way to build a new building when we have AE, which has been renovated just in the last uh, few years, and Fulton is still in excellent condition. The official debate over funding won't begin until the Office of Civil Rights gets a look at Knox County's desegregation plan. The school board hopes to send them that plan next week. Cassandra McGee, Action 10 News. The sign out front says Doyle High, but soon it will be changed to South Doyle. Dr. Sandra Quillen will be the principal of this new senior high, a merger of South Young and Doyle. It's part of the system's efforts to desegregate and meet requirements from the Federal Office of Civil Rights. Quillen likes the idea of this merger. She says it will mean added academic opportunities for students. Doyle students who've been at Doyle have an additional 18 courses that they will be able to take as a result of this merger. South Young students, at the last count I had, will have 57. So definitely an enhancement. The school system has released a new report that says desegregation benefits students who must transfer. The report says the students will now have more courses to take at their new schools. Dr. Quillen mentioned the changes at South Doyle. Other schools will offer additional courses because of transfers and mergers. According to the report, students going from Holston to Fulton can take 60 additional courses. Holston to Carter, 57 and rule to either Fulton or Central 33. No, I don't. But there are skeptics. Diane Bell is part of a coalition fighting the desegregation plan. Her daughter must transfer to Doyle next year. So as far as will it personally benefit her, no. The lower student-teacher ratio, the friendliness at South Young, the fact that she was three minutes from home, all those things were benefits to my child. Bell calls the report a public relations move by the school system. Her group continues to fight the changes while others prepare for the new school year. Chuck Denny, Action 10 News, Night Beat. A lawsuit filed by the Coalition of Community Affairs is one of two stumbling blocks facing Knox County school administrators. The Office for Civil Rights may have given their desegregation plan the go-ahead, but Coalition member Diane Bell isn't impressed with that decision. It just has no bearing on what we're doing. The OCR simply reviews Title VI. What we're asking the federal judge to look at is all the constitutional implications of this plan. But school superintendent Earl Hoffmeister is optimistic the approved plan, which closes 23 schools, will stand up in court. Certainly the federal judge, you know, he has a right to do what he thinks is right. And uh, we think what we're, we have done is in compliance with what the 14th Amendment says, and it's pretty, pretty tough to go against that. The decision made by Judge Leon Jordan could also sway the Knox County Commission. It votes on a $1.6 million request by Knox County school officials August 26, and Commission Chairman Leo Cooper says he will feel compelled to vote in accordance with the law of the land. School officials say they desperately need the money for renovations and new construction work that must be done to complete the plan approved by the OCR. Janice Williamson, Action 10 News. In my opinion, you could put a child anywhere in school, but if they're not happy there, they could be an A student, whether they're black, green, or yellow, and you take them out of their district where their friends are and put a teacher on one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to go down in their grades. If they're not happy, they're just not going to do good. It's going to be all new for them, making new friends and everything, and see, there were our rival team and now it's going to be like now we've got to be friends with them and everything so I think it'll be hard for all the kids. I can't help feeling that it's an awful lot of, of nonsense going on about something that is not really going to have a big effect on the kids lives. I was best myself when I went to school. I've been in schools where 
there were almost no blacks. I've been to schools where there were almost no whites. I've been to schools where there were no Jews whatsoever. And I can't see that it's made much of a difference. I really think that a little more time needs to be taken and looked at this matter. Uh, for one reason, it's because we are somewhat pushing them, or shall I say, shoving them into a situation when really I think a lot of it is just political anyway. Very upset. It's as though we as taxpayers have no say. You know, it's just like living under a communist country. They're telling where our children should go, and it's not right. Members of the Coalition for Community Affairs held a fundraising dinner to restock their financial coffers to continue their fight. Their lawyers testified this week that the school's desegregation plan discriminates against black children. They argued it's a one-way busing plan that will rip black neighborhoods apart. Everyone involved in this case is sympathetic to that ideal, but at the same time, as a matter of law, the court clearly states that that can't stand in the way of, of true integration of the schools. Lawyers for the school board point out the judge's decision says that the school closings called for in the plan were not motivated by unlawful discrimination on the basis of race. The decision also disputes opposition claims that the plan creates an unfair burden on black students. The court is aware of the fact that the imposition upon black students of the greater burden of a desegregation plan can be taken as evidence of a discriminatory intent, but finds that this is not true in this case. Members of the coalition say they're ready to go back to court to keep their neighborhood schools intact. And I guess I'm discouraged because we fought uh, for what we thought was right, for um, community-based schools, for children not to have to be sent out of their neighborhoods. And we're not finished. We continue to keep working in elections and in different areas. So, and we'll be at school board. We'll be around. Coalition members say they'll meet again with their lawyers on Monday. The same day, Knox County Schools will begin their first year under a desegregation plan. Cassandra McGee, Action 10 News, Nightbeat. It's the first day of school in Dana Henderson's English class. Among the students, former rural high schoolers. Erica Mills is a senior this year. She is not happy about leaving rural. I didn't like it, but... It was pain, so I have to deal with it, but I would really like to graduate it from rural. Sky Keela Smith and Shawana Blair are also former rural students. It was just a hassle coming over here. We didn't know how to get here, where the buses stops were, and it was a hassle. I like it, but then again, I don't. It's too far to be coming out. And up For real. Uh, do we get well, ho that? hopefully I can change your impression of Central High School. We're going to work on that. And I hope you'd like it. Principal Harold Taylor says the entire staff is working hard to acclimate all the students. Because right now they're all central students, so uh, that, that's the idea we're trying to get across. The first buses to take the children back home arrived at noon today. Forty-five minutes later, the bus taking Skykeela, Shawana, and Erica arrived. The drive was only about six miles, but for these students, it may have seemed a lot farther. It's often said that with progress comes change, and certainly these students now know what change is all about. What they don't understand is why the change and why the loss of a community school. Gene Patterson, Action 10 News.